John chapter 9. We looked at John chapter 5 last week concerning how Jesus healed someone on the Sabbath. He's not going to heal anybody on the Sabbath per se. And what I mean by that is, is he's not going to be critical or criticized free. He uh, He's going to contribute to his demise, if you'll let me have that expression for a little bit. But all ultimately, it's going to lead to God's glory. Uh, here is John. And he's always describing himself as a disciple whom Jesus loved. And when John writes it that way, he writes it for Christian people. That is why you have the perspective that you do when Jesus is doing the things that he does. And there's one purpose in mind. And that is John 20 and verse 30 and 31 tells us that he that these things were written that we might believe and have life in his name and in fact john 21 tells us that if if all the things could be contained that jesus did uh, the the world couldn't hold all the scrolls that to me is mind-boggling that is just mind-boggling that in a little over three years or about three years shouldn't say a little over sorry uh, about three years, Jesus was able to do the things that he was able to do, but we do have these things recorded. And one of those is John 9. And there's some things that Jesus is going to do for us tonight. And every time you look at it, in fact, I, every time I looked at it, I just kept coming up with more and more points. And I said, well, wait a minute, I need to limit what uh, what I'm what I'm doing here because I can I'm guilty of getting off on tangents sometimes. So we're we're going to look at this tonight as, as we go through it. Before we do, let's pray. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to be here tonight, for the place to meet and the country in which we get to do it freely. Father, we live in a very tumultuous world. We have a lot of things that are going on. And Father, that that has always been the case. We just seem to notice it more. And Father, we just pray tonight that you will help people to seek peace and help, Father, things to be peaceful, that they'll rule as you want. And Father, we do pray for all our leaders that we can lead quiet, peaceable, and honorable lives before you. Please bless us tonight as we study, and we pray that you'll forgive us of our sins. It's in Jesus that we pray. Amen. When you're a young preacher, there are things that will just shock you. Uh, there are things... That will shock you when you're an old preacher. <laughs> uh, there are things that will shock you when you're just a preacher. And some of those things, for example, uh, uh, we are starting to notice a little bit the epidemic that was once uh, a long time ago called measles. Uh, I, I didn't even think about measles when I was a kid. I had the vaccines and and didn't like them, obviously, but I had the vaccines and and you never heard about it. Polio, you had the vaccines and so you didn't think about polio. And now uh, there's some kids not here, but across the country that are starting to get measles again. And, and it's highly contagious. If you've seen pictures of it, you'd think it's just a uh, a rash of some type, but it's actually measles. And and the reason I bring that up is because it's amazing what some people tend to believe. Uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, you know, the measles uh, are, are just are an academic and the government is behind it. Well, I don't know how the government's behind that. Uh, maybe a few years ago during COVID, you saw the the two veterinary technicians that were in their office and and where the one lady had the shot and for COVID and the other uh, other arm wasn't and they took that scanner that they took a dog chip and they ran it across there and they said see there's the number there's the number here's the problem with what they were trying to what they were doing it was all a joke it was all a joke 
And they didn't tell anybody it was a joke for at least six months. So guess what people started doing? They started believing that the government's trying to track you. Well, I want to assure you of something. If you don't think the government can track you, uh, look in your cars. If the government can't, I mean, you they can control your car if they really wanted to. If somebody really desperately wanted to, they could control your vehicle um, because it's got a computer in it. And um, I don't want anybody to do that. Don't wish that on anybody. We sometimes get deceived into believing things. And one of the things that is so popular still to believe, and this was the shock, you thought I'd miss what I said at the, at the start. This is what shocked me. And that is that people think that God is punishing you for some sickness or disease you might have, or God is punishing you for something. Uh, and when in reality, it's not a part necessarily a part of God's will, but it God sees it and God knows it. Now, why do I say that? Well, look at John 9, verse 1. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, for you and me, we we would notice that. We'd see somebody that... Uh, that uh, couldn't uh, couldn't see. In fact, uh, we had a, a friend of ours in Northwest Oklahoma, two friends actually, that um, she couldn't. They neither one of them could see, and they had to have a, a stick, a walking stick, to get to class. And we felt so bad one day because we saw her uh, at a distance and and didn't think anything of it. She's very. She was very self sufficient. She, she got to where she needed to go, got to the classes she needed to go, come to find out that her walking stick had broke. And instead of going over to say hi to her, we were, we were in a hurry, I know, to get to class. But still, we should have stopped long enough and said, do you need some help? Because we'd ask her that on several occasions, and she'd tell us no. Well, remember, we're talking first century here. When people, and especially these 12 men that are with Jesus, guess what they consider blind people to be? Sinners. And you don't hang around with, you don't go anywhere near, you don't associate with people who have these maladies. So when Jesus noticed him, point number one, Jesus noticed him. You don't read John saying, we noticed him. He didn't, they didn't really notice him until Jesus noticed him. And then number two is they asked the question, and that is, he got this by what sin? And I had somebody walk up to me and tell me or ask me when Christopher has his birth defects, and I, we don't make that very public, but you know him, so you wouldn't know it if I didn't tell you. And somebody walked up to me and said, well, what was God punishing you for? And I stood there a second, and I went, why do you think God was punishing us? Why do you think he was doing that? And it just floored me. I wasn't mad, but I just it just was a shock to me that somebody would think that because he's got the birth defects that he does, that God's punishing us. And I started, I, I stopped for a second, and then I thought, you know what? I've got a whole list of things that I've been forgiven for. Maybe he's just trying to bring that back up, but I thought I better not do that. Because sometimes I haven't forgiven myself for some things, and I need to stop that. But... When they asked the question, who sinned? Now, let me ask you a question. How many do sin and fall short of the glory of God? How many have sinned and do fall short of the glory of God? Everybody. So the question is somewhat ridiculous in that I, I get the question. 
I do get what they're saying. And they've been trained that way. They've been trained to think that because that's what the Pharisees and the scribes were teaching. So verse 3 says, and Jesus shocked them. Neither one. Neither one. Now, what happened was, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. And then Jesus is very good at what he does, and he says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it's day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Now, those last, that last little bit, <laughs> you kind of you kind of go, okay, Lord, um, I'm not catching that. Well, you will catch it, disciples. What is he getting at? He's saying, we've got work to do while I'm here. There's kind of a time coming when I'm not going to be here much longer. But I do realize I got a work that is sent by the Father. Now, for you and me, this isn't a big deal. But first century Christians questioned whether Jesus was really who he was and who he is. And so when he says, I have the works sent, being sent by the Father, remember they questioned whether or not he, he was even of God. He gets back in chapter 8, remember, what did they call him? Beelzebub. You're the son of Beelzebub. And Jesus said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So they're quite, they've got this question. For, so for anybody that says I'm not a, that he's not of God, they got to argue with John 9, 4, and 5. As long as I'm in the world, this is one of the seven I am's of John, I am the light of the world. It's amazing to me how that sun sits 93 million miles away you can't look at it directly, but you sure like the way it feels, don't you? And when you get in a tight corner or you get in a tight spot, this drives me nuts. I don't know about you, but it drives me crazy that you got to have a light. By the way, Harbor Freight's got a good one that's about 70 bucks, but it is. It'll blind you. And you turn that thing on, you even even make it do flashy stuff. I don't know what that's called, but and you go in there and turn that on, man, lights up the place. Jesus says, that's who I am. And in turn, as his disciples, who are we? Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That's who we are. Verse 6, when he said these things, he did the most, I could just picture this. Sorry, I got to stop here in a second. And just, I want you to picture that you're a, you're a, a CNN, a Fox, a News Nation reporter, and, and, and you're, you're showing what Jesus does. He spits on the ground and when he does, he puts it on the guy's eyes. Now, do you think the Centers for Disease Control would have a problem with this? First time I read it uh, years ago, I was like, well, okay, you spit in the guy's eyes, and so what? Or spit in the clay and then put it on the guy's eyes. So what? Oh, my lands. If there's one thing COVID taught me is, oh, can you just imagine what would have happened to Jesus had he spit in the clay and put it on the guy's eyes? See, Jesus isn't limited in how he can heal people. You see, back in chapter 4, he just says, go your way. Your son's may have been made well. He says to another, the nobleman, he says, he said, I've never found such great faith in, in Israel. He said, you're not worthy to come. I said, I'm not worthy 
pardon me, let me rephrase it. The nobleman said, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. And yet I have people right and left. I tell all day long what they needed, what they're supposed to do. And Jesus says, I found, and guess what? Servant was made well at the same time Jesus said, go. Another time he spits in a guy's, or spits in clay and, and a guy and puts it on a guy's eyes. Another time he tells a fellow, rise, take up your bed and walk. He tells blind Bartimaeus. Now, Matthew said it was two, two blind beggars, but he tells them what? What do you want me to do for you? He directs attention to himself and then does what? He tells them, what do you see? Well, I see something like, or in the other three, or the two, I mean, I see a man looks like trees. And then he saw, and everybody said, are you sure he, that's the guy? Well, <laughs> and that's what they're going to do here. Are you sure this is the guy? Well, it looks like him. It looks like him, but I'm not sure that's him. Well, when he said these things, he sped on the ground, made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And then he tells him to do what? Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. You see, Jesus is always teaching. He's always teaching. Somebody a while back, I, I don't know how it came about the specifics, but anyhow, he said, or I was telling the kids something, and all of a sudden he goes, you must be a school teacher. I said, how'd you know? He says, because that's the way you're talking. You're telling, you're teaching these kids all about, mm -hmm. translated scent. And so when he goes, uh, it just didn't work. It just did not work. And he was still just as blind as he was before. No. Now, here's what is so amazing. He sped on the ground, Jesus, put it on his eyes, put the clay on his eyes. Uh, Andrew, don't do that to us, please. He works over at the clay and tile place in Silver, downtown. And when he washed that, guess what? He started seeing immediately. Now, let me ask you another question. Did it really have anything to do with the pool? And did it have anything to do with the clay? And did it have anything to do with the spit? No. See, a lot of people tell me, you see, you don't have to be baptized in order to be saved and i asked them how do you explain matthew 28 19 and 20 how do you explain mark 16 16 how do you explain acts 2 38 how do you explain acts 8 verses 26 to 40 how do you explain acts 22 16 how do you explain first peter 3 21 they don't have an answer for me but they just object so much to that one act that brings them in contact with the blood of Jesus, John 3, 3 to 5, and they'll turn around and they'll say, but I believe. Now, folks, belief is a part of it, but that's a substitute. And he's not going to do substitutes. You know, the idea that these elements had really anything to do with his seeing. What it had to do with it was his obedience. It was his obedience. You see, he, we don't read of anybody that took him there. We assume by some facts here that he knew how to get there. But it didn't mean he got there by himself. Probably did, but we don't know. Verse 8. When he came back seeing, the neighbors rejoiced, and they were so excited 
and it got on 13, it got on four, it got on seven, it got on two, it got on CNN, it got on Fox, it got on News Nation, and every news organization you can find that, man, everybody was just rejoicing that this guy could see. Well, you know, if I said all of that, it's not true. <laughs> so what happened? Therefore, the neighbors and those who had previously seen he was blind, they previously saw he was blind, said, is this not, is this, is not this, he said and begged. And watch this. Some said, well, I think, I think it's him. I, I, I think it is. I'm not sure it is, others said. And 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 others were just they just don't know what to do. And he said, I'm he. Now can you imagine? Can you just imagine that they said that it was he? And you're like you're like, what wait, 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 wait. How in the world? And then you don't answer. Could, uh, could that happen? How could that yeah. take place? And, yeah, and you and I would dramatic. probably be doing the same thing. Uh, if if we were were in that position and situation, don't blame them. But watch what he said. I'm he. Now, one of the things that. I love to do when I was younger and got old enough to be responsible and all was when one of our family members would call, I'd answer the phone. And inevitably they would say, Kenneth, talking about my dad. And I would say, no, that's my first name, but I don't go by that name. And they'd always go, oh, Dwayne Hush. Now, others they don't have to ask who I am. I mean, I start talking, they go, well, hello, Dwayne, how are you? And I know we have caller ID, but there's others that, hey, Dwayne, how are you? Wouldn't the voice give it away? He, did this. he said, he said, I am he. There's proof. Now, what did Thomas want when Jesus rose from the dead? He wanted what? He wanted proof. The proof he wanted was the holes in his hands. He also wanted his side. Uh, see his side? What happened? He got to see it. And Jesus said, what? Blessed are you because you've seen, but even more blessed are those who've never seen. And what? Still believe. Well, here we are. They got proof. Now, there are some people who would question whether or not, in the first place, that this book is really real. That. You know, it's, hey, it's an old book. It's older than Shakespeare. It's older than than most of your, you know, Plato and Socrates and all that stuff. So you're telling me that this book's still something to live by? The answer is yes. Well, why should I live by it? Because the one who wrote it never ages. All right, verse 11. Verse 10, I'm sorry. Therefore, they said to him, how were your eyes opened? Now, here's what I find fascinating about that. Here they are telling, uh, it looks like him. No, it is him. No, it isn't. They're back and forth. Back. Now, they all agree. How were your eyes open? He said, a man called Jesus. Made, now, wait a minute. How do you know it was Jesus? You don't think somebody was talking? <laughs> You don't think people were saying, 
that Jesus that Jesus was there. You don't think that uh, that Jesus was uh, that somebody didn't vocalize his name? And by the way, did I Jesus know. have a reputation? Christopher, please. Put, Christopher, okay. put that on mute, please. Good. Good. You think that they didn't know his reputation? Didn't know he was who he claimed to be? Oh, yeah, they knew it all. So he says, a man called Jesus, made clay, and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and I got my eyesight. No, not quite. Notice the word, received. You know, one of the ways the devil gets to us, you should feel ashamed for the way the Lord's blessed you. You should feel downright embarrassed for the way the Lord's blessed you. Hey, you don't live up. You don't live up. You don't go tell others. You don't, you, you, you make mistakes. You blow it. You sin. And you don't ever measure up. Now, if he doesn't do that to you, then, okay, I'm the only one. And I doubt that. But notice what he said. I received my eyesight. Years ago, we had a member of the church here, and he went down to Crucis, and Dr. Apple told him, said, or he went to see Apple about his cataract surgery, he post-cataract, and he was doing pretty well. But he said, you know, I just have a blur in this, in this eye. And Dr. Apple took a look, and he says, well, yeah, he says, uh, you got about 45 minutes? And he was kind of like, what? And he said, yeah, you got about 45 minutes? And he said, well, yeah. And he said, I'll fix that. And he said, now, when you get a, like, we don't have any wind here in New Mexico, I know. When you get a speck of dust or you get a little, maybe salt in your eye or, or do like I've done, you get a little chili on your hands for a snack later and you forget, you know, and you rub your eye, pretty well burns, doesn't it? He said, he got that all ready to go. And he said, it was a laser. And it went bump, bump, bump for 15 seconds. And he said, every time that laser bump, my eyesight improved. He said, breach. He said, I went from a no driving at night to where I could drive 24 hours a day if I wanted to. I said, that's great. He said, oh, I'm not going to. I said, no, no, I didn't say that. But it's great. He could see. He had 2015 vision in both eyes. He was over 80 years old. And I'm like, man, I hope when I get to be your age, that first of all, I can get there. And then in the second place, I hope I have that good a vision. That's kind of what happens here. So they said to him, where is he? And he said, I don't know. So they brought him who formerly was blind to the Pharisees, verse 14. And it was a Sabbath. I take back what I said earlier, huh? It was a Sabbath when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. And the Pharisees ask, also asked him again how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and I see. And therefore, some of the Pharisees said, this man's not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, well, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was division among them. They said to the blind man again, what do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes, he said he's a prophet. Oh, that was the wrong thing to say. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind. Now, wait a minute, hold on. He's been blind for how long? We don't know. From birth. We don't know how old he is. 
but everybody knows he's blind. Now what are the Pharisees saying? Oh, he I don't even know if he's really blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who'd received his sight. And they said, is this your son? Who do you say was born blind? How does he now see? They said, we well, you know that our son was blind and that he, or that he, this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone, if anyone confessed that he was the Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Now, that doesn't sound like a big deal to you and me, but that's just like being told you can't go back to Walmart, Albertsons, or anything to do groceries again. You can't socialize with people. So therefore, his parents said, or said he is of age, ask him. So they again called the blind blind man or the man who was blind. I love this, don't you? They 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 interrogate him. They bring his parents in. Then they bring him back. And guess what? They're going to ask him the same question. Give God the glory. We know this man's a sinner. And he said, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. That was the second wrong thing to say to the Pharisees. <laughs> The, but one thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. One of the things you and I always need to hold on to is what we know, not what we feel. I assure you, feelings will get you in trouble. Christopher used to say to me, you broke my feelings. And I said, guess what? I'm going to break them some more. Feelings are one thing. But what you do with them can get you into serious trouble unless you go with what you know. Remember I just said a few minutes ago how Satan attacks us? He's right in every capacity except one thing or everything he said except one thing. He forgot about the grace of God. Oh, you heard he God. forgot about the grace of God. The grace of God is simply treating us, or excuse me, the gift of God and mercy is treating us less than our sins deserve. Isn't that what jo Jonah said? Isn't that what Joshua said? Isn't that what Moses said? You're a God who is of great compassion merciful, slow to anger. By the way, that's not the God I grew up with. I grew up with a God that was totally opposite that. Then I could, then I got to thinking one day, besides the fact of grace is abounding, you know what? If God is the way I thought he was, then why didn't he send us all straight to hell to begin with? And he didn't do that. Don't get me wrong. He's going to send, they're going to receive their sentence, but he didn't do that. Look at verse 27. I'm oh, sorry, verse 26. They said to him again, what did he do to you? Uh, I'd be like, I, 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 duh, I was blind. But now I can see. So now they said, well, how did he open your eyes? They said, I told you already. And you didn't listen. Now I have another dumb question. Not because you're dumb. Don't go home thinking I'm calling you dumb. But you already know the answer to this question. Has anybody ever not listened to God? Didn't we look at that Sunday? Nehemiah 9? One of the first times the people ever admitted in their 430 year existence, and now you're looking at 70 years, it's 500 years. First time they ever really admitted, you know what, God, this is not your fault. This is our fault. This is our fault. We understand now why you did what you did. So he continues. I told you already, verse 27. And you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You ever feel like you're talking and saying the same thing over and over and over again? 
Oh, I do. But how did he open your eyes? I told you already and you didn't want to listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Now, that's the fourth thing he said to make them mad. But think about it. You're in the position that you got healed. You know everything about it because you have a firsthand account. And when he says, do you want to be his, become his disciples? Well, wow. So they reviled him. The idea of revile means more than just yelling and telling him to hush. They did the same thing to Jesus when he was on the cross. They reviled him and said, you're his disciple and we're Moses' disciple. We know that God spoke to Moses. Now, how did they know that? Didn't they have parents to tell them, especially the dads tell them? Now, they didn't have any proof, physical proof, that he talked to the descendant of Moses. But they took on face value, faith value, that Moses did talk to God and God talked to Moses. But they can't accept what they see. Isn't that amazing? You're, Mo, you're his disciple. Well, we're Moses' disciple. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we don't know where he's from. Now, had Jesus ever told them where he was from? What did he just say in John 9, 5? I'm from the Father. You remember when Caiaphas asked him the question? I've already told you where I'm from. You're not going to listen to me. Oh, repeat it and we'll believe you. And so Jesus said, it is as you say. What further need do we have of witnesses? This man's blaspheming God. Aye, aye, aye. Verse 30. The man answered and said to him, why is why this is a marvelous thing that you don't know where he's from, yet he's opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it's been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of, of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. This guy tells what he knows. You and I have been commanded to tell what we know. I know what we do sometimes. Oh, now, wait a minute. I, I can't do that because I don't know enough. I can't think fast enough on my feet. I can't do like you, Dwayne, and I'm not that great a person. I'm just saved by the grace of God like everybody else. And I can't do all of that. You know, if you know one verse, you can start. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 4. If you know that section right there, that's where you can start. Do you not know that Christ died for your sins? And that he was buried? And that he arose the third day? According to the scriptures? Verse 34. You were completely born in sins, and are you teaching us? Now, let me ask you a question. How many babies are born in sin? None. I know what's out there taught. I know what's popular. I know what people, some Christians even think. But you don't read of God taking Moses when he threw a fit, and you know he threw a fit, because I haven't found a baby yet that doesn't throw a fit. When when our doctor would walk in, since he was a male doctor, breathe through a fit about getting shots. If it was a female nurse, female doctor, oh, she was all right with that. Christopher just didn't like shots, period. He's like you, doc. He didn't like needles. And here this man is, and he's born a sinner? No. The Bible tells us that the age of accountability, whatever that is, is in Romans 14, 12. God will hold 
the, the people accountable when they know the difference between right and wrong. Baby doesn't know that. And so they accused him of being born in sin. Verse 35. By the way, they cast him out. And one of the last points I want to leave with you tonight is Jesus always runs after you. He always runs after us. Can you imagine? This guy has been blind from birth. He's He only knows to use the other four senses. And now he has been kicked out of the synagogue, probably kicked out by his parents too, because they're afraid of the Jews. They didn't want to get kicked out either. And Jesus goes and finds him. Verse 35, when the, Jesus heard they'd cast him out when, they, when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You've both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Can you imagine if the Lord were here tonight and he walked up to you and said, Do you want to believe in the Son of God? You're just seeing a common human being. You're not seeing what you think you're going to see a supernatural individual. No, that wasn't Jesus. He is now, but that wasn't Jesus then. In fact, he was just such a commoner. We didn't even, we didn't even regard him as a very handsome. Isaiah 53, verse 37. You've both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Verse 38, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. And Jesus said, for judgment, I've come into the world. Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I thought Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He did. I thought Jesus loved the world. He did. And he does. And he still wants to save people. Then why would he say what he would say? Because one day he's going to be the judge. He's going to be the judge. And God's children are going to judge with him. We will judge angels, folks. First time I read, the first time I heard that, I didn't have much way of of scripture, and I I wanted to go tell that preacher off. Until I went and looked it up, he's right. <laughs> he's right. Verse thirty nine: Judgment, I've come into the world, and those that do not see may see, and those who see may be blind. Now, is he trying to advocate blindness? No. But you know very good and well, there are some people you've talked to for years and years and years, and you have tried everything you can to share with them, and they still don't obey. I've got some family members. They know very good and well what they were taught, what I would tell them, and what I do teach them from time to time. They know I'm right. That's not me. It's God being right. But they'll turn around and go, yeah, I know then why don't you do something about it? I don't know. I don't know. You mean to tell me you're not going to do anything? No. Why? Because they don't see it. Verse 40. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? Can I just do something before I read what Jesus said? Duh. Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. There are some people, that there are things that you and I do, let's be honest, that we know what we do. We're not proud of it. It may be in a fit of anger. It may be in a fit of emotion. But there are other things that we do we don't even know. And we need to talk to the Lord about it. I'm not excusing the sin by any means. But there are some things that we just don't know that we do. He said, you'd have no sin, but now you see. Or now you say we see. Guess who they incriminated themselves? Jesus didn't have to tell them that. So he said, therefore, your sin remains. But the best part of the whole lesson is they could have had the same thing and they could, they could still have the same thing before Jesus 
died. I'm sorry, before they died, they could have had the same thing. They could have had eternal life. And this is what I try to tell people all the time in one form or another. It isn't that we want to get you in a water and, and, and that way we can say, oh, we got five million gazillion people here. That isn't the point. We want you to go home because there's a 100% chance you're going to die. I was listening Saturday to the scanner a little bit. When I hear the ambulance, I hear it to make sure it's not one of you. If I hear something that I don't even know, I don't even pay attention to it. 24 years old. He takes his gun, his dad's gun, puts it right here. He's being cremated. And I don't know how many times I tried to talk to him about behaving right, being successful, and you know, doing what what you need to do. And he killed himself. Because he had no hope. I've never gotten that bad. I've come close. But I've never gotten that bad. Ladies and gentlemen, as long as we have a breath in us and as long as God's alive, we always have hope. We always have hope. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the time tonight. We pray that we've used it wisely. And thank you so much for your word and the many lessons in your word. Father, we pray we've been built up tonight and we go home better than when we came. Please keep us all safe and in your care. Keep loving us. Help us to love you more. Forgive us of our sins. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you all for being here tonight.